So the Global Risk Report 2015 recognizes water crisis as the number one global risk this year. Now, this is a combination of inputs from various public sector players, but the larger participation in the surveys that comes to the conclusion around the risk register is actually from the private sector. So the private sector is acknowledging that water crisis is the thing to worry about in the years going ahead. This is not a new phenomenon in the risk register. It seems to have hit the media in a, in a much more uh, dramatic way this year than it has in previous years. But in four years running, water has been in the top five risk. In fact, it has been number two for quite a while. But there's an interesting shift that has happened. As you will see in this, in this table, is that for the three years before, water was classified as an environmental risk. And for boardrooms, that was something a little bit further away. This time around, it is no longer classified as an environmental risk. It is, in fact, classified as a societal risk. <coughs> so what this means in a composite is that there is a possibility for a renewed conversation around water in the world, our sustainability of water into the future, and what we need to do now in order to ensure that sustainability. Because when we're talking about water-sensitive design and we're talking about cities that are established all over the world, the thing that comes into that design is the notion of retrofitting around trying to import new infrastructure into the system at very high cost. And we have many examples all around the world of cities that are trying to do this right now. What Africa has to represent for the rest of the world is an opportunity to plan off the base for the first time in a way that makes sense into the future. So water-sensitive design probably has a better opportunity to take off in this continent compared to anywhere else in the world. This is very important. We also should know that we've been missing a lot of opportunities. So in the past 15 years, this country has given rise to two fairly large cities almost from scratch. That's the city of Bombella and this, the city of Rustenburg where this notion of water-sensitive design has not really been inculcated into the spatial planning for those developments. We have yet another opportunity associated with the larger scale infrastructure program, and this is something we have to do much more smartly. But the last point that I want to leave with you is this. That no matter how smart the science, no matter how smart the infrastructure, eventually, Smart cities are developed by smart people. And smart people are not only the town planners, and we have folk from the city of Johannesburg and the city of Chwane here with us today, but it's all of us as the citizens of these cities and towns that will ensure that we move into the future with smart cities that are healthy cities, that are water sensitive cities, that make a positive contribution beyond our individual needs.